Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation. We have x to the power 5 equals 5x plus 3, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, can we solve any quintic equation? No, not in general, because there's no quintic formula. So what do we do? We need to use another method. Okay, I know some people are going to say, oh, we can use these radicals, those radicals to solve it but there is no quintic formula. I keep repeating this over and over. Since there's no formula, we kind of need to use a different method. And one of them is called rational root theorem. If there are any rational solutions, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And I'm hoping that something that divides three, such as plus minus one or plus minus three, will be a solution. Is that possible, for example? x equals 1. Test it out. You can do 1 minus 5 minus 3 does not equal 0. x equals 3. 3 to the fifth power is 243 minus 15 minus 3 does not equal 0. You can test similarly negative 1 and negative 3, but none of them are going to be solutions. So we have no luck, right, with the rational root theorem. There are no rational solutions. That's what it means. So the solutions are either irrational or not real, like complex, right? But wait a minute, this is a quintic, so it should have at least one real solution. Why? Because the coefficients are real numbers and complex roots come in conjugate pairs, like a plus bi and a minus bi. By the way, if you like complex numbers and if you want to know what I'm talking about, you can also check out my other channel, which is about complex numbers, and that's called a plus bi, okay? Now, let's see how we can approach this problem from a very different perspective. You know what it's called? It's called method of undetermined coefficients. In other words, factoring. Great. So how do we factor a quintic? Good question, right? Well, we can kind of factor it into a cubic and a quadratic, like this. Suppose this can be factored as x cubed, plus ax squared, plus bx plus c, multiply by x squared plus dx plus e. Now I chose the leading coefficients as one because we have x to the fifth, so we probably have x cubed and x squared in our factors. Okay, now here's what you need to do. Maybe put this on the left-hand side would make more sense, but if this were on the left-hand side, just assume, we would distribute everything and then set it equal to this, right? But that will give us a lot of work. Don't worry, I did the work for you. And here's what you're gonna get from here. When you distribute and rearrange the terms, you're gonna get x to the fifth plus a plus d times x to the fourth plus a d plus b plus e times x to the third power plus a e plus b d plus c times x squared it's not going to fit here, so I have to use the second line. Plus BE plus CD multiplied by X and finally plus CE. Now, you want this to equal this expression right here. So the coefficient of X to the fifth must be 1, but we already have that, right? So don't worry about it, but focus on this. There's no X to the fourth in the equation, so this needs to be 0. There's no X cubed in the equation, so this must be 0. There's no x squared in the equation. This is a very special quintic, by the way. And there's actually a group of quintics which are so called solvable quintics, and this must be one of them, even though I'm not exactly sure. It looks like one, because there's a class of uh, quintics like this, and of course A and B are used differently here, but uh, they're only a finite number. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's continue with our story, okay? Now, what do we do next? So we basically get a system of equations, but wait a minute, we're not done yet. What about the coefficient of x? It's negative five, cool. What about CE? That's a negative three. Now, even though we said that there are no rational solutions, you can still test out possibilities for C and E. For example, if you want good solutions, nice solutions, and C and E are probably integers, and in which case you could kind of factor out, like test it out. Like you can say, okay, C equals one, E equals negative three, 
c equals negative 3 equals 1, so on and so forth. There are four possibilities, right? With c being 1, negative 1, negative 3, or positive 3, and then e uh, correspondingly. So you can all test these out, but you don't really need to do that. If you can solve a system of equations, which I'm going to give you, then you should be fine. So here's what we get from here. AD plus B plus E equals 0, because that's the coefficient of x cubed, right? And then we have AE plus BD plus C, which is the coefficient of x squared, also 0. And then let's go ahead and write the other equations. Maybe next I'm going to use BE plus CD equals negative 5. So I use this, this, and this. And the next one is going to be A plus D equals 0 because there's no x to the fourth. And finally, CE equals negative 3. Great. So that's my system of equations and good luck solving it. But the problem is, actually not a problem, this is kind of nice because we have a couple zeros, which will make things a little easier. Uh, actually, uh, three zeros, to be exact. And then, uh, they can kind of use those. And there are five equations and five variables. So, it should be solvable somehow. How do we solve it? That's a good question. So, I'm probably start with the fourth equation, this one, and write d as negative a. And then, start replacing d with negative a everywhere. That should give me a good um, progress, right? So if you replace d with negative a here, that's going to give you negative a squared plus b plus e equals 0, which implies b plus e equals a squared. So let's go ahead and save it. You never know how that's going to be helpful. And then replace the d with negative a again. You're going to get a e minus, notice that it's going to be minus b a or a b, it's probably better to write it as a, b. And then plus c equals 0. And from here, you could probably do the following. Factor out an a here, right? It says e minus a plus c. And then negate this. So you can put it on the right-hand side, which will become a times a minus e. That's just another equation I might use. And then let's see what else we can do. So we didn't use the second I mean the third equation, I think we use the first and the second one with, uh, along with the fourth one. Maybe we can use this one, BE plus CD is negative 5. And notice that D can be written as negative A, so this will be BE minus AC equals negative 5. BE minus AC equals negative 5. I'm going to put that here. And then we have one more equation, which is CE equals negative 3. So we kind of have like four variables and four equations. If I can reduce this even more, things are going to be a little easier. But again, it's a lot of work. So I'm kind of looking through this. I don't really see a nice way of approaching it. Maybe I can try to, let's see, can I isolate B somehow? For example, from the first equation, from this one, Let's call that first for now. I can isolate b and write it as a squared minus e. And then if you replace b with that everywhere, that might give us uh, something a little better. Maybe here, replace b with e times a squared minus e. And then for c, I can do this, negative 3 over e, so that things are more in terms of e and a, right? So let's see. I replaced B with that, and which equation did I use? BE minus AC. Okay, the next one is going to be AC, but I'm going to write it as A times negative 3 over E, and that's going to be a negative 5. Let's simplify this a little bit, see what that gives us. EA squared minus E squared plus 3A over E equals negative 5. This probably can give us something square or cubic, whatever. Well, let's save it for now and then continue to use these two things. For example, I have a B here in the first equation. I can replace, well, never mind, I already used it. Uh, in the second equation, I had C equals A squared minus, can I use something here? C equals A squared minus AE. So let's write that, A squared minus AE. 
And then I can kind of replace C with negative three over E and then set it equal to this and then cross multiply. That is gonna give us A squared E minus AE squared equals negative three. Looks like that's a new equation. All right, great. And then, uh, is there anything else I can use? I think I used this one already. I used this one and I think I used everything. Guess what? We have two variables and two equations, which is a huge improvement, right? This doesn't mean we're gonna be able to solve it easily, but I'm gonna leave it at that because I'm ready to give you the values. Are you ready? Okay, here's our A, B, C, D, E values. A is equal to one, B is equal to two, C is equal to three, D is equal to negative one, and E is equal to negative one. So by using that, I'm able to convert my equation, which is this, into or factors, x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 3, multiply by x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Great. So I'm not going to bother solving this because I'll show you the solutions, but I'm going to go ahead and focus on this because this is a really nice equation, you'll see. From here we get negative b plus minus root 5 over 2, and what does that tell you? The golden ratio, right? Yay, it's beautiful. Now these are two real solutions. How many more real solutions can we get? Probably at least one more because this cubic should have at least one real solution. Make sense? Let's go ahead and check out the results from Wolfram Alpha and a graph. Here we go. Ta-da! There are three real solutions and three intersection points. And these are the solutions. Do you like the third one? That comes from the cubic. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.